the latest on COVID-19 infection and vaccines on fertility. Hi friends and welcome to 2022. This is a two-part series. Part one has already been released on COVID infection and vaccination in pregnancy. So go check that out if you have questions there. Today I'm going to dive into the top reasons why people are not getting vaccinated and that is because of fear of future fertility. Of current pregnant patients, only 39% are vaccinated and that is a very low number compared to overall U.S. vaccination rates of 78%. I am a fertility doctor. I am double board certified in OBGYN and REI, and this is my passion to provide fertility related education. So I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more, and let's dive into the fertility related topics today. There's huge concern that getting a COVID-19 vaccine will impact your future fertility. This all came about from a post from somebody who's well known for spreading misinformation, saying that getting the mRNA vaccine specifically, which creates antibodies to the spike protein, would damage the ability for the body to make syncytion, which is an important hormone in placentation or the placenta growing into the uterus. Syncytion is important, but the vaccine does not have similarity in attacking this. The spike protein and syncytion are not related. This was really a great stretch. It has not been supported by data at all. But this claim alone led to fear that there would be stillbirth, miscarriage, or inability. The word used was sterilization, which means inability to ever get pregnant again. This has not been supported by any data, and even as a practicing fertility doctor who does embryo transfers and obsesses about pregnancy rates and implantation rates and loss rates, there has not been any clinical change in what we're seeing even on a day-to-day -day basis. First of all, let's think about COVID-19 itself. We have good data showing that COVID-19 can impact sperm development in men. I have an entire video on this. So if you get a COVID infection and you have sperm, you can have a severe drop in your sperm count, even complete azoospermia or absence of sperm. This can persist for three to six months until the body regenerates the ability to make sperm. Sperm production is a transient situation, which is largely influenced by the environment. That being said, if you have testes and make sperm, Getting a vaccine is the best thing you can do to prevent yourself from getting a COVID infection, therefore maintaining your fertility. Studies have not shown any harm from the vaccine on sperm parameters. So when it comes to you know male fertility or looking at sperm health, getting COVID infection bad, getting a vaccine, no change. That group should universally get the vaccine if they want to preserve fertility, undergoing fertility treatment, or trying to get pregnant at the current moment. When it comes to fertility, there is a lot out there. So there's been a study looking at AMH levels. So AMH is anti-malarian hormone. It is made from the cells that surround all of the follicles or the eggs inside the ovary. Higher AMH levels mean you have more eggs remaining. Lower AMH levels mean you have fewer eggs remaining. Essentially, what we are seeing is no difference in AMH values in people who receive the vaccine. We saw a normal change with time. And so does the vaccine make you run out of eggs? No. Further, we've seen that ovarian function is not changed by getting the vaccine. So one of the concerns with menstrual bleeding was that it was messing up ovulation, but truly the, the ovary is still making steroid hormones just like it could. The ovary is a hormone making factory. And so we aren't seeing those differences in hormone production or follicular genesis, ovulation from getting the vaccine. So this should make us feel confident that we're not running out of eggs after getting the vaccine, that we're not having difficulty making steroid hormones or abnormalities with ovulation. Even when it comes to IVF outcomes, because you know we're crazy about those, we are not seeing any differences in IVF studies. So when you look at IVF treatment parameters, what we are looking at is how many, how much medication you needed to grow your eggs during the IVF cycle, how many eggs were retrieved, how many were mature, how many fertilized, how many embryos were made. Those factors, no different if you got the vaccine or not. Another common argument that I hear is that we don't have long-term data. And I get this. This is my world every day because IVF is still rather new. The oldest IVF baby in the United States is my age. She's 40. And so IVF is still new. We don't know long-term outcomes of some of this stuff. And that's good and bad. That means technology is changing. Changing. That means we're able to do amazing things like utilize technology to bring life into the world. That's what we do with IVF. And did people have a lot of negative things to say about it when it first started or that there's no long-term data? Absolutely. But sometimes you do things because the benefits outweigh the risks. And that is universally where we are with getting the COVID vaccine versus risking getting an infection. 
the vaccine has not been shown to cause any harm. No increase in stillbirth or miscarriage, no decrease in ovarian reserve, no decrease in success for an IVF cycle, no change in sperm parameters. A COVID infection definitely can change the menstrual cycle and can change sperm parameters. And a COVID infection has been shown in some people to have prolonged inflammatory illnesses afterward. And that certainly could impact the environment that you are trying to conceive and carry a pregnancy in. All right, and one of the studies that I have been waiting for was just published this week in the Green Journal. This is another question I've been hearing a lot since the vaccine came out. Does the vaccine cause period disturbances? And what we do know is one, COVID has been reported to cause period disturbances. So a COVID infection in one study, up to 25% of people reported to have one to two cycles of a period irregularity after a COVID infection. And then some people were reporting the same thing after the COVID vaccine. Mechanism could have been stress, hypothalamic dysfunction, could have been an endometrial response from activating the immune system. That's what I think everything favored. Could have been anovulation, a variety of different things. But regardless of what the potential cause was, there has now been a study to look at the vaccine and menstrual cycles. So the study is a cohort study in the United States. There are over 3,000 people who were included. 2,400 of them were vaccinated and 1,500 were not. About half got the Pfizer vaccine, about 30% got the Moderna and the rest got J&J. &J. Overall, getting the vaccine was associated with a one-day disturbance in getting your period as compared to people who did not get the vaccine. And so when we talk about cycle length, we're talking about the length of time from one period to the next. There was also been reports of change in amount of bleeding and the group that got vaccinated had approximately a one day difference in length of bleeding as compared to their baseline compared to the unvaccinated group. So this data is reassuring and confirming what we have been saying. Although as an individual could experience some cycle changing on the whole, most people are not. And it appears that most bleeding is not clinically significant because the average difference was one day from baseline. It also means that one individual person could have some changes, and we do think that this could be from a variety of reasons. One of the most common, I believe, is endometrial activation because the endometrium is an immune tissue. It's immune responsive. That's important for implantation. And just like you get swollen lymph nodes and a fever, having some abnormal bleeding can also be a sign of high immune function. And so to me, I take your period very seriously. We'll call it your fifth vital sign. It tells a lot about your body and your health and hormone status and how your body is doing overall. Getting period changes when you're sick is common, and getting period changes from an intense immune response should not be that alarming. Part of the reason why it was is because we were not talking about it. So now we have data. So despite Robert Malone telling you that he created the Pfizer vaccine, let's remember he just worked on the mRNA vaccine 20 years ago and hasn't published a paper in that long of time. Despite him saying that the vaccine is going to cause antibodies to syncytion, causing female fertility and ability to create a placenta, we have absolutely no evidence that there is an impact on female reproductive health from becoming vaccinated. We do, however, see bigger impacts on reproduction, fertility, and pregnancy outcomes in people who get a COVID infection who are not vaccinated. This data supports getting the vaccine. No change in ovarian steroid production. No change in follicle function. No change in ovulation. No change in AMH levels. No change in menstrual cycle length. Significant pregnancy protection by being vaccinated. Are able to see there have been so many studies since the vaccines became available to the general public. We have been evaluating this. We would never want to do anything that would cause more harm than good, especially when it comes to your fertility. I'm a fertility doctor, but this evidence is extremely reassuring. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, I appreciate your support. You can always follow along on Instagram or TikTok at Natalie Crawford MD or listen to the As A Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.